Hey everybody, Gravy Train here with an episode of Gravy Training. So I answer a lot of questions about runes and for guildmates and such, I'll go through and log into their account with their permission and kind of give them a rune overhaul on how their characters are runed, um, help them choose which runes to craft and which runes to get rid of that sort of thing. So it, it's kind of a big deal and all things being equal, you could have a, a hero that uh, the max rune power for a hero is like, I don't know, 1450, something like that, or 1480, maybe 15. Oh no, it's gotta be over 1500, but it's a little over 1500, something like that with all elite runes. You could have all elite runes on your hero and your hero could still be completely useless because the game only says, all right, this is an elite rune, it's five star, it's um, or, or legendary, so therefore it's 311 points. So obviously you can have 1555 then, the total. So, but I mean, if you have a, an elite evasion rune on your hero, um, so, I mean, the, the point is to get the right stats. So this rune, or this particular guide, will be going over uh, the, the kinds of different runes that you will encounter, which ones you should be acquiring and holding on to, which ones you should be getting rid of. I'm not going to go into, or at least not much, into the mechanic of heroic versus legendary, whatever, um, I'll, I will kind of touch on it a little bit just for kind of the new players, but um, in general, we're going to be talking about um, legendary runes. So um, if we start looking ahead to this, this first um, type, you can see so uh, the kind of the anatomy of a rune here, and this is just the, the detail page for a rune, but you can see here it's got the fancy border with the square on top of the, the, the vertical or the point aligned square on its corner and then the square behind it. Those are legendary runes. So they are of legendary quality. Um, they will be either um, basic, improved, greater, superior, or elite. Um, and each one will have stats. They need to be upgraded. Um, so you can see they've got the number on here. They all get updated or upgraded for cash and sometimes, uh, or for gold and sometimes um, dusts. Uh, they will be anywhere from level 10 to level 30. 30 is means it's legendary, it's five star, all that. You're only gonna wanna be really going for five star runes. Uh, most of your event rewards, although some of them have been kind of cheaped out. Thanks, boss fight. Um, there have been some four-star runes given out as event rewards. Um, kind of cheap. Um, because they didn't have the same roster power points or anything else. Um, not really ideal. Um, but yeah, that's what you're going to run into. Now, the next step down, where they don't, they'll they'll still have this same look and feel. This kind of like... Um, uh, and there's a word for this, and I'm blanking on what it is, this kind of chevrons kind of look, um, but it won't have the squares on the corners behind it. That's going to be heroic runes. As you're leveling up, heroic runes are fine. The, the runes that you get from the store and the rune packs are actually pretty decent deals if you can scrounge up the gems to afford them um isn't when you're level 20 level 30 level 40 50 60 you're not going to be encountering many people that are using crafted runes even on my alt and it's no secret that i spend money on the game um even on my alt with spending money getting all the stuff I wasn't really crafting runes until I got to the level of superiors, basically in my 50s, 60s, purely because of the, the 
by the time you can get the materials, unless you're taking a, like your sweet time to level up and, and you're really kind of going slow, you're not going to gain enough materials to, to start crafting anything until later on. Now that may change with the update that's coming because they're going to make the different rune um, stones and the, the powders um, for them are going to be purchasable via different shops and stuff. But for right now, it's going to be difficult when you're leveling up to, to kind of craft runes. You may be able to do some. I'm not saying you can't, but it's not going to be as easy as it is later on. So, um, so yeah, getting those store-bought runes or stuff that you find if they're a decent star or whatever, you don't need the best runes in the world while you're leveling up. Once you're at level 70, you want to be using superior and elite runes. You want them to be legendary, and you want them to be five star. Um, unless you're just doing PVE and you're probably not watching this video if you're just doing PVE because there's a lot less need to min max or to really optimize your heroes. So assuming you want to be better at PVP and, and that's why you're here, those are the types of runes you want to get. Um, and I'm not going to go into matchmaking or anything like that. That's a, a whole black box of, of bad. Um, but in general, that that's the the character of runes. Now they have they'll have between one and four stats. Ideally, you want ones with four stats. Uh, there'll be a primary stat, a secondary stat, a tertiary stat, and then a, a bonus stat. Um, so there, there's a, a whole guide um, on what the possible effects are. And I actually, I can post that. When I post this up here, I, I do have a copy of that. So I just need to grab that information and put it up here. It'll be available in the comments or in the description below the, the um, video. So anyhow, um, yeah, and then the other part of this is you can see the power of the rune. Ultimately, you're really looking for... This guide is geared towards people using superiors and elites. So you're going to be seeing 280 and 311. Um, with the assumption that you're using legendary, five-star superiors and elites. So, the first type of rune... And I put this first because I think everybody knows what these are now. Um, they are very, very, very useful. Um, some of the most powerful runes you're going to find in the game. These are not limited to superiors and elites, however. Um, you can get, I actually have on my alt, um, an improved festive rune. Uh, you're not going to see any basics, I don't think, but who knows? Maybe you will. Um, I'm pretty sure you're going to get it, going to get improved, but improved graders and whatever. So they can be, uh, rewards from different tiers of PVP and that kind of thing. So these are some examples. These are from my roster. Um, so I've got them in different colors. One thing boss fight is not very good at doing is being consistent with their icons or their names or anything else. So one of the things you may actually see a rune that might say community rune and it might have a starts with plus one energy for what we're talking about a festive being it's any rune that has starts with plus one energy so regardless of what it's actually called on the rune most of them should say festive rune but there are some where it'll be elite community rune or there or there may be like a guild rune that has a starts with plus one energy so these are some of the examples. Um, some notes about them then. So a festive rune adds a one time plus one to your energy at the start of battle. That doesn't mean, and then that's it. Like the, the energy, the festive portion of it is over at that point. It doesn't mean that you get more if you get rezzed. You get you start with more you'll start with more if you're if you're like in an emily res or something like that but it's a one-time thing at the start of the battle 
Um, it does not affect regen, so you're not going to regenerate more per round unless the, the rune somehow has that. I don't think there are any like that. Um, and etc. So, what does this mean? Well, let's go to a hero. And I'm yeah, here I am trying to click on the wrong thing. So, we'll go to a hero and look at Long John Suki here. So you can see here now the S1 and here's another thing like I say S1 always starts powered. The first attack the first item because this will come up later is the basic attack. So this is purely a basic attack regardless of which hero this first slot the yellow slot is always basic attack. Then you have um, powers here or abilities here specials special one special two special three or s1 s2 s3 and then if you just click on this it doesn't show it but if you actually click and hold or press and hold on the power you can see where it says energy cost five turns energy cost four turns energy cost five turns so the first ability always starts powered so this one is always going to be available on the first turn to every hero unless something stops it like energy drain or silence or something like that second ability some heroes second ability or some heroes third abilities will start powered and they will say if they start powered so let's see if we can find um yeah so here's bovis his second ability it specifically says very last thing starts powered so you're not ever going to need to use a festive to make something start powered if it's already starts powered the thing that you want to look at is the number of turns so say i want to be able to use blade fury on the first turn with long john suki so I know you start at one energy in round one. Every round after that, you gain an energy. There's other ways to gain energy, but vanilla, assuming all you're doing is like basic attacks, um, that's what you're going to get is one energy per turn. So turn one is one energy, turn two is two energy, turn three is three energy, turn four is four energy. So this means that on the fourth turn, he will be able to use this ability. What a festive will do is if I have one festive that I put on Long John Suki, I will be able to use this ability on round three instead of round four. If I put two festives on Long John Suki, I'll be able to use this in round two, not round four. And if I put three festives, on Long John Suki, I'll be able to use this effect round one. Typically, when you're, not always, but when you're putting festives on a hero, you're putting festives on a hero so that they can use an ability right out of the gate. Um, some prime examples. Um, Valken, everybody's favorite. You want to be able to use Steel Sharpens Steel, the S2 ability, round one. So most people will, or I, I'll say most, most of the advanced players will have three festive runes on their Valken. And if we look here, festive, festive, festive. So that's my three festives. So round one, I can do this ability. I can also do this ability, and this one starts powered. So that's effectively what festives are all about. Um, the most extreme case is going to be somebody like Zen. I think I have mine pulled off of Zen. Maybe I don't. Oh. So Zen has an ability that um, has been a big part of the meta. So Enlightenment heals an ally, gives them haste, and increases their speed for a turn. So it makes a hero fast, 
So in order to use this ability, you can see that it takes six turns, which means round one, on, on round six, it will be available. Unless you put five festives on Zen, and then he can use it round one. So this is all that it, or this is all, I say all, it takes this much to be able to do that with this hero by just using this hero independent of other heroes. There's other ways to get energy, but that's the, the extreme case is all five slots being festives. So when you see you get attacked and you get rolled, or sometimes not, but typically you get rolled by a, a Zen team, this is what's going on. So. Uh, so that's festives. Tank runes. So everybody's got to be pretty familiar at this point with tank runes, or you might hear them called taunt runes. Um, these are a couple of examples. Um, I'm not, I think there are some elite taunt runes up top or tank runes out there. I don't have any. All of mine are superior. Um, but there may be some elite that I just haven't seen or don't remember offhand. Uh, I know that they exist in all colors except maybe red. Although somebody, I think somebody said there was a, they had a red one. I've only got them in purple and green. Um, hopefully they release them. I've definitely seen them in yellow and blue. Um, but so far, those are the ones that I have. And, I mean, they're typically going to be defense or health or something like that. Between the two of these, the green one's better. Um, defense is, is always better than health. Uh, even in cases, really, where health does something else, I think defense is better. But And the reason, and I, I brought this up in another video... When you're when you get heroes that are say say the the defense here with this rune your defense was ten thousand and here your defense is twelve thousand or fourteen thousand depending like if you've got guardian runes it can really go up quite a bit um, so say this goes up to fifteen thousand when you're getting hit for thirty forty fifty sometimes a hundred thousand points of damage with like Jin or Malice or somebody like that. Having an extra, even if this gets multiplied up to like 5,000, you're getting an extra 5,000 health as opposed to an extra 5,000 defense. The 5,000 defense is going to reduce that damage by significantly more than 5,000 health. It's going, that 5,000 defense is going to take that 25,000 hit that's coming in at you and drop it by more than 5,000 hit points. It's going to take 10,000 off of it, or it's going to take 12,000 off of it, or 50, whatever it is. It's going to remove a lot more than having the health. So that's why, and I've said it in a couple of other videos, that's the big reason that defense is good and health is bad. Because health is very one-dimensional. It's a one-time bonus, effectively. And it, it really, it, it, it's just not as powerful of an impact as defense is. So these are examples of the runes. What they give is one round of taunt per rune. You can add multiple taunt runes to the same hero if you have them. And each one will extend the taunt by one round. Now remember that heroes like Hansuke um, and any of the other honorbound runes, uh, because of Bushido, they get double or they get an extra turn on the effect. So one round of taunt becomes two or Hansuke or Deadeye or um, um, Yokohuna or, or whatever. So um, two rounds for honor about here is provides a defense buff. Um, and that is a, similar to the Guardian Rune, that is a scalar, it's a percentage, it's not a flat amount. So those buffs are strong. And that buff does get cleared when Taunt gets cleared. So the buff gets purged, whether it's the, the defense buff and the Taunt are effectively tied together. One of them gets purged, they both get purged. Kai hits you with his S1 and clears all Taunts. Your defense buff goes to 
Um, so these, and, and taunt, in case it's not clear, there are some heroes that can ignore taunt or can ignore taunt under certain conditions, like, say, a demon, if they're on a team with Zalkod, they can ignore taunt. Or Shade, or Drac, or Femus, or, or there's, I'm sure, a few other heroes I'm not thinking about, but they can ignore taunt and attack anybody they choose. Otherwise, you have to, if there are taunt runes active, you have to attack a hero with taunt. So if two heroes have taunt, there's no differentiation between which of the taunting heroes you have to attack. But you either have to attack one or the other of them, or one of the taunting heroes, or you need to get rid of the taunt before you can target another hero. Now, that doesn't mean you can't hit the other hero, but you can't target another hero. And that's pretty much all Taunt does. It's very useful. It, it's, it's a strategic point around controlling the flow of the battle. So one of the principles, you want the enemy to play to your tune. You want your opponent to have to play a certain way. Um, and that's what Taunt runes are trying to do. They're putting up limits, obstacles, where you're setting the ground in your favor Stacking the deck in your favor. Putting taunt on your toughest heroes, that kind of thing. 